Now today we'll be talking about electronically controlled engine mounts and the system that controls them. If you're not sure what they look like, just to give you an idea before we begin, here's the front of the vehicle, the radiator looking straight down, and there's the front engine mount that is electronically controlled on this vehicle. There's also a rear one. Now the brains of the system is a control valve which lives right here. So let me start by removing this cover so you, we all have a better uh, view of what's going on here. And I'll show you on how you can test the entire system. Now the first thing I want to do is get better access to this control valve. Uh, it's a little easier to work, plus it's easier for you to see as well. Now if you don't know where the control valve lives for your vehicle, a lot of times you can just do a Google image search and it will pick up exactly where the valve lives. Another option is if you go to a form specific for your vehicle, there's always someone that knows everything about uh, your specific vehicle. Last thing is just to purchase the uh, repair manual specific for your vehicle. And with that cover removed, you can clearly see the control valve. Now again, this is called the engine control solenoid valve. Now, it may look a little confusing, but very simply, you have a harness connector, which will test that this is getting power. And also, as you can see, we have two vacuum lines. Now, the first vacuum line, if you follow it, this one furthest to the right is just looped around and going right back into the intake. So that's not the one we're concerned with. Take a look at this other line. If you follow it, let me just do this right now, just so you can get a better view. A little hot under here. I just ran the car recently, but if you take a look, this line, this vacuum line goes all the way down and then what it does is it splits. So this line really goes toward the front engine mount and then there's another line right here that goes to the rear engine mount. So a lot of times if you have a trouble or if you do have trouble with your engine mount, either the line is leaking or the uh, mount itself needs to be replaced. And I'll show you how you can test both of them. So the first thing I'm going to do though is just remove this and we're going to grab a vacuum tester. Now this is your typical vacuum tester. You can typically rent these for, for free from your local auto parts store. You can also purchase them from Amazon. I'll include a link directly to Amazon. If you are a Prime member, you get these within one day typically. This happens to be the Mighty Vac MV8000. You can bleed brakes, do a lot of different things with this. But what we're going to do is apply vacuum to this line and see if it holds pressure. Very, very simple test. So let me just put this down. So again, with this kit, there's a bunch of different adapters. Now this adapter most likely will do the job. So here's that vacuum line we just removed. Go ahead and insert the adapter. Then the kit includes a vinyl hose, which will hook up right here. The other end, the other end goes to the tool itself. Now we're going to start the vehicle, let it idle, and we're going to apply uh, we'll do 20 inches worth of vacuum, in other words, just to number 20, and see if it holds vacuum. Now again, if I did that too quickly, I'm just grabbing the tool, and everything is included in the kit. The vinyl tubing, the adapter directly to the line running. This rubber hosing runs to both engine mounts, and we'll start the vehicle, apply vacuum, and see if it holds. This will test essentially, again, if we have a break somewhere in the vacuum line or in one of the engine mounts. Here we go. Okay, so we'll apply again 20 inches worth of vacuum. And there we go. And just hold it for a good 20 seconds. Make sure that the needle is perfectly plumb. If it moves very, very, very slowly, chances are you just have a leak maybe here or at the other end. But essentially, if this is not plumb, if the needle is not straight, then you certainly have a leak in either the rubber hosing or the engine mount. And I'll show you how you can diagnose where the problem is. Now, the you press on the bottom and that's it. Again, one more time. Now to replace these hoses, I'll include a link in Amazon. They typically run 3.5 millimeters in terms of the diameter. 
and uh, you can typically get a very good high quality German product for quite inexpensively it fits pretty much any car out there and there you go so this is in good shape but let's say that you do have a leak and you need to pinpoint exactly where it is how do you do that you know look at that I just realized there's a spider in the emblem huh. anyway so how do you test if it's one of those rubber lines or the mount itself well the easiest one I can show you right away is certainly the front engine mount so here it is and as you can see we have a rubber line that runs right to it so that's the front mount again and then if you follow this that rubber line leads all the way back to that solenoid control valve so if you, if you do have a leak what you can do is take the uh, vacuum tester hook it up directly to the engine mount and we'll do the same test okay so here's my vacuum tester I'm using the the exact same adapter plugging it right into this rubber hose and again apply vacuum and if the vacuum holds the mount is good that means we have a leak in one of the rubber lines okay again 20 inches is perfectly fine and there you go it's perfectly plumb so that's how you test if the leak is at the mount or at the uh, at the rubber hosing now if uh, if you don't know where the mounts are but you can find the rubber hosing you can just try replacing the hosing hopefully that's all it is and redo the test and if you still have a problem then you know you pinpointed that you have a, a leak at one of the engine mounts if you do this test everything is okay but you still have a problem let's go back up to that valve and there's a couple things you can do okay so what I want to check is if power is getting to this solenoid valve now if we take a look right here there's a harness connector at the six o'clock yuck at the six o'clock position right in the bottom there's a tab which you can hear I'm pressing down on it press down the tab don't pull from the wires pull on the body and there you go now what I'm going to do is turn on the ignition key you don't have to start the car just turn on the ignition key and we'll test if this is getting voltage now this is a digital multimeter in fact I recently purchased this off Amazon it was quite inexpensive and what you want to do is test for voltage so right here you have a number of different options but we need this guy right here you want the volts DC okay let me just zoom in so you can see that so volts DC if you see AC you don't want that okay that's for your household current DC is for your vehicle okay now let me turn on the ignition key and then what we're doing is you have two leads from the multimeter the red lead will touch the uh, one of those prongs which I'll show you from that harness connector black is ground that's any good metal point and we should see battery voltage that tells us tells us that power is getting to this solenoid to turn on and do its job that's all that we're doing just verifying that it's getting power very very simple there we go just turn the ignition key on don't start it so the black lead is at ground or touching ground a good metal point the chassis any solid metal point on the car is always good and then we have let me zoom in we have two prongs here on the multimeter now if I touch one of these we should see 12 volts the other one we should see nothing so here we go and there you go this is receiving 12 volts worth of power so we know that this is receiving battery voltage now if you don't know which prompt to touch if I touch the second one essentially nothing uh, that's millivolts if you take a look here that's an incredibly low amount of battery draw so this is what you want to see 12.01 volts in this case okay so that verifies power is getting here now if you don't see a reading then you either have a, a break in the wire from this harness connector to the fuse box or you have a blown fuse let me show you what that looks like now most vehicles have at least two fuse boxes one underneath the dash the other one's underneath the hood on this vehicle this is where the valve I'm sorry the fuse lives and it's number 18 in my case okay so this guy right here oops sorry about that okay so number 18 is a 15 amp 
Okay, let me grab my polar. That is this guy right here. Uh, of course, it's going to be good because we just saw a reading. But there you go. So if you don't see a reading there, most likely you have a blown fuse. If you if the fuse is good, then you have a wire break between the, the fuse box and the solenoid valve, and you need to track it down. Again, that's pretty remote, especially on modern cars, unless your car is sitting and mice are just eating away at it. Pretty, pretty remote, but just check, make sure that it's getting power. Now for this next test, we're going to use, again, the multimeter one more time. Again, really good, nice tool to have if you plan on doing your own auto repair. Same with that vacuum pump. You can bleed your own brakes, do a number of different tests. I've had these tools, well this one is new, but I've had these other tools typically for years and you use them so many times over and over again. But in this case we're going to start the vehicle, again we'll do a volt DC, and I'm just simply taking both leads, one, doesn't matter which lead goes to which prong, so in other words I'm just taking, let me zoom in here, I don't know how well you can see this, it's getting a little dark out here, but one lead will go to one prong the other lead will go to the second prong and we should see battery voltage now it's going to be something higher because the car is running the alternator will be kicked on so maybe 14 volts we should see but again you want to verify that we do see a reading so let me start the vehicle okay here we go we should see battery voltage so around 14 volts A little tricky because the engine's getting hot, but here we go. And there you go. We have 13.6 volts. So that verifies that we're getting power. Okay, if you don't see a reading when you do that test, chances are you, your vehicle needs a software update. In other words, controlling this entire unit is the power control module. And very simply, you'll have to bring it to the dealer most likely, unless you have something that's very sophisticated in terms of a scan tool and they would have to update the software. Again, this is pretty uh, pretty remote. You know, chances are you, you have a problem most likely with this vacuum line, but again, if, uh, if you do that test, you don't get a reading, you may need a software update. Welcome to new, uh, new vehicles. The last test is, one more time, we'll start the vehicle, remove this vacuum line, and make sure that we're getting vacuum, and you'll see what I mean. Very, very easy. Okay, so again, I'm just removing the same hose, and if I place my finger on this, you can even hear it, we're getting vacuum, and that verifies that the system is working correctly. So that's what it takes to diagnose and really pinpoint where the problem is. Very, very simple. Really, key, of course, is a vacuum tester. You can rent these, but again, if you plan on doing your own auto repair, I've had this for maybe a decade use it over and over and over again. It's well worth the $40 investment. Same with the multimeter. If you need a, an idea, I'll include some links to Amazon and uh, you'll be on your way.